Hey friends, welcome back to the WordPress Speed Optimization 101 course. This is the fifth video of the WordPress Speed Optimization 101 course, and today we'll be looking at the cumulative layout shift, also known as CLS, and how to improve cumulative layout shift. This video will be one of the most interesting and valuable, as I'll talk about the primary CLS and secondary CLS, show you some examples and how to optimize them. If you're new to our channel, hit the subscribe button to receive notifications whenever we upload a new video. Before we start the video, let me share some of the most valuable resources with you. If you want to speed up your slow loading website for free, I have a couple of solutions. I'm offering WordPress Speed Optimization 101 course for free. The course contains plenty of videos that will help you speed up your website. You can join our dedicated community for free, post your questions and I'll do my best to assist you. Finally, you can visit our website, click on audits, and in the form, if you provide the required information, I will audit your website, highlight the issues that need to be fixed, and provide solutions. What is CLS? CLS is a measure of the largest burst of layout shift score for every unexpected layout shift that occurs during the entire lifespan of a page. A layout shift occurs any time a visible element changes its position from one rendered frame to the next. Over time, various changes have been made to the CLS metrics, and now the way CLS is calculated is different compared to the old method. With the new method, this is how CLS is calculated. A burst of layout shifts, known as a session window, is when one or more individual layout shifts occur in rapid succession with less than one second between each shift and a maximum of five seconds for the total window duration. The largest burst is the session window with the maximum cumulative score of all layout shifts within that window. Okay, in this image, you can see session window one, which is considered a session window. Blue bars that we see inside the window session represent the scores of each individual layout shift. I understand these things might look too complex for beginners and intermediates. In the upcoming videos, I'll discuss the individual issues, then things will become clear to beginners and intermediates. Now for beginners, let me put it in simple words with some visuals. In this video, a user is on the checkout page and added 56 items to the cart. For some reason, the user decides to click on the no go back button and at that very moment, an ad will appear and pushes the buttons down. And instead of clicking on the no go back button, the user clicks on the yes, place my order button and the order gets placed. This layout shift is considered a bad user experience. Here is another example. We can see the text at the top of the page and after some time, this ad loads. As the ad loads, the content is pushed down. If these issues are reported in the lab data, we can easily find and fix the problem. But things might get complicated if these issues are reported in the field data. I'll cover everything in the upcoming videos. There's no need to worry about it. Expected movement and unexpected movement. Most of the time, beginners assume all the elements that shift the position are causing CLS issues and that's not how CLS works. There are two types of movements, expected movement and unexpected movement. First, let's cover what is unexpected movement. Note, CLS issues can be reported with expected movements as well. Let me go back to the previous example. In this video, a user is on the checkout page and added 56 items to the cart. In this case, the user is not expecting the order now button to move down. Hence, this is considered an unexpected movement. This layout shift will be recorded in the CLS metrics and must be fixed. Now let's talk about expected movement. For example, when a user clicks on a button, a pop-up might open or an off canvas menu might slide in. And these are considered expected movements as the user is aware when a button is clicked, a movement might take place. And this movement won't be recorded as a CLS issue. Here's an important point to keep in mind. At times, even expected movements might cause CLS issues. For example, after clicking a button, if a pop-up takes more than 500 milliseconds to appear, then it will be reported as a CLS issue. Layout shift scores. Before we go any further in this video, it's important to understand how the layout shift scores work. Impact fraction and distance fraction make up the layout shift score. And I'll explain both and show you a couple of different examples that help you understand better. In the early days, the layout shift score was only based on impact fraction. At a later stage, they introduced distance fraction to avoid overly penalizing cases where large elements shift by a small amount. First, let me explain what impact fraction is. Here are two web pages. 
In the left image, the gray box with the text takes up 50% of the viewport and should stay in the same position. Now look at the second frame. Once the gray box with text block is loaded, the gray box with text shifts down by 25% of the viewport height. The red border shows how much of the viewport height the elements occupy. In this case, the elements occupy 75% of the total viewport. So the impact fraction is 0.75. Now let's look at the distance fraction. Here, we will look at the distance that unstable elements have moved relative to the viewport. The distance fraction is the greatest distance any unstable element has moved in the frame. Horizontally or vertically divided by the viewport's largest dimension width or height, whichever is greater. In the second frame, the gray box with text is moved by 25% of the viewport height, which makes the distance fraction 0.25. In this example, the impact fraction is 0.75 and the distance fraction is 0.25. We must multiply the impact fraction and distance fraction to get the layout shift score. 0.75 multiplied by 0.25 equals 0.1875. Now let's look at the second example. As you can see in the first image, the gray box with text occupies 50% of the viewport and the green box with text occupies 50% of the viewport. Now look at the second image. Once the gray and green section is loaded, then the click button loads, which changes the gray box size and pushes the green box with white text down and part of the green box and text is out of the viewport. If an element is moved partially out of the viewport, the invisible area is not considered when calculating the impact fraction. Start position and end position. Now things become more interesting. Let me discuss the start position and end position. Before we go any further, you must know an element's start and end positions. For example, look at this gray box with black text. In this case, the top portion of the box is the start position, and the bottom portion is known as the end position. You have to pay special attention to this example, as I'll explain the most common CLS issue that you might come across in the field data. When an element shifts its position, if the start position of the element does not shift, it's considered a stable element. In this case, the gray box size changes when the click button loads, but the gray box's start position does not shift. Hence, it's considered a stable element. You might think the click button element is causing the CLS issue, but the click button didn't exist in the DOM previously. Hence, the click button start position didn't shift and it's considered a stable element. Now, let's look at the green box with white text. Did this box shift its start position? The answer is yes. And this green box with white text is causing the CLS issue. I know this looks confusing, but I'll show you how to fix the issue in a moment and then it will make sense. What is the layout shift score in this case? We must look at the impact and distance fractions to get the layout shift score. Look at the left image. As we can see, the gray box with text occupies 50% of the viewport, and the green box with text occupies 50% of the viewport. In the right image, the green box start position shifts, affecting 50% of the viewport. So the impact fraction will be 0.5. When the click button loaded, it pushed the green box down by 14% of the viewport. If the 14% shift had affected 100% of the viewport, then the layout shift score would be 0.14. In this case, a 14% shift affected 50% of the viewport. So the layout shift score will be 50% of 14%, which is 0.07. To fix the CLS issue, we need to ensure the green box's start position doesn't shift. Okay, how do we do that? In this case, we must assign a minimum height for the button element. In such a scenario, it's always safe to wrap the button in a div and assign a minimum height to the div. That way, even if an element loads later, the div will still reserve the assigned height or width. Let's assume we wrap the button with a div, set the minimum height of 100 pixels to the div, and refresh the page. As we can see, the gray box with black text is loaded. And at the end of the gray box, a height of 100 pixels is reserved for the button. This way, even if an element loads later, it won't shift the position of other elements, such as the green box with white text, as it happened earlier. If we look at green box with the white text box position didn't shift, and now this box is also considered a stable element. Now, I'm giving you a task that you need to complete. There are three text blocks and add loads at the top of the page pushing all three title blocks. Then, after title one, another add loads, which pushes title two and title three down. Then, after title two, another add loads, which pushes title three down. 
If you know which elements are causing CLS issues and how to fix them, leave a comment below. I'll go through all your comments and it will help me understand if you can understand my teaching method and follow my instructions, lab data CLS and field data CLS. CLS metrics can be different in lab data CLS and field data CLS. First, let's discuss lab data CLS. When we test a site using testing tools such as PageSpeed Insights, GT Metrics, Chrome DevTools, and Crux Report. These tools will be able to monitor the layout shifts when the page is rendered and highlight most of the issues. Here I have to mention an important point. These testing tools can only highlight the issues before users interact with the page. Now let's discuss field data CLS. Layout shifts might occur on user interaction. And you can find these issues with the help of the Crux Report also known as the Chrome UX report. When tools such as Chrome UX report are used, there is an advantage. These tools can track both the primary and secondary CLS, and it will be easy to trace and fix the issues. Note, I'll create separate videos and show you how to use the following testing tools. What is a good CLS score? CLS scores that are less than 0.1 are considered as good. Scores between 0.1 and 0.25 need improvement. Anything more than 0.25 is considered poor. To provide a nice user experience, the CLS score should be less than 0.1. The 75th percentile of page loads divided across mobile and desktop devices is an excellent benchmark to ensure you're achieving this target for most of your consumers. Now let's look at how the CLS can be improved. Here, I'll list how CLS can be improved and in the upcoming videos, I'll cover the individual points in detail. Most common reasons for CLS, images without dimension. Adding image dimensions will fix the issue. Most of the optimization plugins such as Flying Press, Perf Matters, WP Rocket, etc. have this feature inbuilt. Web fonts. Using system fonts or preloading fonts will fix the issue. Dynamically injected content such as ads, embeds and iframes without dimensions. Assigning the required height and width will fix this issue. Lazy loading content such as ads, embeds, and iframes without dimensions. Assigning the required height and width will fix this issue. Lazy rendering of HTML elements, style sheets, and in some cases JavaScript might also cause CLS issues, non-composited animations. This looks too complicated, but don't worry my friends, I'll cover all the points in the most user-friendly way, and even a beginner can optimize CLS issues by following the methods I show in the upcoming videos. If you think the content you have watched till now is valuable, then this short video is a must watch for you. If you want to learn how to optimize a website efficiently, the ultimate speed optimization course is for you. Speed up your website, pass core web vitals and increase your business growth. This course is suitable for complete beginners, intermediates and advanced users. Here is a website that scored 16 on PageSpeed Insights and took 29.2 seconds to load. In just a few hours, the website scored a perfect 100 and loaded in just 174 milliseconds. Become a speed optimization expert and expand your portfolio. You are not just learning how to optimize websites. In the 100K Web Agency Mastery course, I'll show you how to find high paying clients, generate recurring revenue, etc. If you're wondering how much I charge for optimizing a website, the pricing starts at $500, which can go up to $30,000. I want to see you charge the same to your clients. By the end of this course, I want clients to search for you and not the other way around. The first 300 people who join the Ultimate Speed Optimization course will get a 100K Web Agency Mastery course worth $497 for free. Course links are in the video description and in the pinned comment area. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more such videos, like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel and share the video with others. Sharing the video with others will help me get more views and motivate me to create more valuable videos to help you and others. We appreciate your support and look forward to having you in our community. I'll be back with another video soon. Till then, take care, bye.